Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and today I'd like to talk about the city of Neverwinter, a history of Neverwinter, if you will, leading into its current state. Neverwinter, also known as the City of Skilled Hands and the Jewel of the North, is a metropolis sitting on the northwestern Sword Coast. Volo, in his travels, has said that it is the most civilized city in all of Faerun. Neverwinter was formed from an early elf settlement named Illifarn during the Crown Wars. Eventually, the kingdom was divided into three city-states, Ilian Bruin being the most prominent. Ilian Bruin was an elven city that often fought with the human netherese city of Illisk, and in negative 111 DR, the orc marches occurred. Orc hordes streamed from the spine of the world and lay waste to Illisk and Gontelgrim. The elves of Ilian Bruin banded together with other elf tribes to halt the orcish rampage into the high forest. The humans of Illisk rebuilt their city and attempted to expand it. In negative 12 DR, the elves of Ilian Bruin pushed back on the city of Illisk and their expansion into the south. Eventually, the two cities made peace, and in negative 4 DR, they set the river Marar as the boundary between their kingdoms. Although the elves of Ilium Bruin were successful at repelling the orcs and the city of Illisk, it came at great cost. Their kingdom collapsed and Ilium Bruin dissolved as elves left for Evermeet or fled into the Feywild. Then human communities began popping up, and a settlement named Iragrestor was founded in the year 87 DR, the first multiracial settlement in the area. Irigrestor would eventually be renamed Neverwinter due to the year-round ice-free harbor. Neverwinter grew and grew, becoming a large city, and by 457 DR, a school of wizardry was founded, propelling Neverwinter even further. The city's nickname, City of Skilled Hands, comes from its gardeners, who are skilled enough to keep flowers blooming in windows year-round throughout the city, even in the coldest winter months. This is partially due to the warm waters of the Neverwinter River, which if you remember from the Gontelgrim video is caused by the giant fire primordial that lives nearby. This primordial causes all the volcanic activity at Mount Hotnow and keeps the surrounding areas unusually warm during the winter months. In 1372 DR, this is when the Neverwinter Nights PC game comes into play. I was surprised to learn that the story in these games, Neverwinter Nights 1 and 2, is considered canon. We can't tell the story of Neverwinter without its most well-known story, The Wailing Death. So spoilers here for the Neverwinter Nights PC game. Follow me backwards in time, all the way back to the creator race of the Saruk. 10,000 years ago to be specific, and Morag, queen of the Saruk. Morag and a handful of her subjects entered into an alternate dimension via a magical device known as the Source Stone to escape the destruction of her race. Now, the Forgotten Realms wiki says that they escaped due to the Ice Age that occurred in Faerun, but I was under the impression that the creator races came after the Ice Age. Perhaps the Saruk were around earlier than I previously thought, or fantasy history is unclear. Regardless, the Saruk did leave around that time period. Anyway, flash forward back to 1372 DR, and big surprise to nobody, Neverwinter is built over this source stone. Morag's goal is to turn Faerun back into the jungle it once was during the Age of Thunder. Now, a magical malady called the Wailing Death struck Neverwinter citizens. Clerics and healers were dumbfounded at the disease's resilience to both mundane and magical healings. Hundreds were dead within days. Now, the Wailing Death was caused by the Source Stone upon its discovery. Morag wasn't counting on this, but used it to weaken Neverwinter, and after the Wailing Death had killed many of Neverwinter's citizens, she supported an invasion from Luskin, formerly Illisk, to start a war between the two cities. The hero of Neverwinter, namely Yu, finds the magical ingredients to stop the Wailing Death and travels to Luskin to find and destroy this evil cult, culminating in a confrontation with Morag by entering into the Source Stone itself. The hero of Neverwinter stops Morag and escapes the Source Stone. Everyone's happy. By 1400 DR, the Netheril had infiltrated the power structure of this now weakened Neverwinter. And also, the Red Wizards of Thay had created a Dread Ring, a magical ring that pulled power from death. Their goal was to kill enough people, giving Zastam power to overtake Neverwinter and the surrounding areas. Flash forward to 1451 DR, and again, spoilers for the R.A. Salvatore novel series, specifically his last few books, but the city of Neverwinter was struck with catastrophe again. 
Minor earth tremors that had plagued the region for months were the precursors of the eruption of Mount Hotnow. A portion of that volcano's peak exploded with such force that lava and superheated ash poured across the city in an avalanche. Half of Neverwinter's population died and a great chasm formed in the city. A canyon-like crack in the earth that spawns all manner of twisted and deadly beasts. It extends down into the Underdark to a subterranean lake that is part of the domain of the Aboliths. At the bottom of this sea churns an active pocket of spell plague, or it did by 4th edition standards, but currently the chasm was sealed by powerful magics. The eruption hurt the Netherese motives, but greatly empowered the Red Wizard's Dread Ring. Thanks to Dritz and his adventuring party, the Dread Ring was destroyed, and the ancient primordial was put back to sleep underneath Mount Hotnow. Neverwinter today is rebuilding. Lord Neverember, a former Lord of Waterdeep, made himself protector over Neverwinter and invested much into the city, hiring a militia to guard and protect it while rebuilding roads, bridges, and other structures. The population has embraced him as Lord Protector, and it was his engineering that sealed the chasm. The people of Neverwinter have accepted his leadership. Gontogrim has been restored as well, and Neverwinter hopes to have a close ally in moving forward. There is opposition to Lord Neverember's authority, but with no unified leadership or another power in the city which appeals to the citizens, most of the, quote, resistance just turn their attention to helping be rebuild the city. And that's it for today. Neverwinter is such an iconic city in Faerun, and so much has happened to it. I thought you guys would enjoy this video. Thanks again for watching, liking, and or subscribing. Every little bit helps. You guys rock, and I will see you all next Wednesday.